What is going on everybody? How's everybody doing today? We are back here today reacting to NBA analysts reaction of players before and after the draft we've done this before um with european players and i i thought maybe you know what let's do it today with lonzo ball i just made a triple b a ball rebuild on the main channel so i was like you know what we'll keep it ball today we'll do a lonzo ball reaction so it's gonna be reaction uh, me reacting to NBA analyst reaction of Lonzo Ball before and after the draft. We'll see if they change up their opinion on him or not. I know uh, Balling and Talking has another video of Luka Doncic in the same scenario. And I think Chris stops as well. Um, but if you want to see me do the uh, Luka Doncic one, let me know in the comments below. Like always, I will leave a link to this YouTube video in the description. And we'll see. Do any of these analysts change up their mind? Were they right from the start? Or did they have some bad takes? Let's get into this. Like that, what player who was uh, striving for greatness wasn't confident? And so I love it. And I probably would also use the number one pick on him. Certainly before the tournament started, I would have used the, the first overall pick on him. The Aaron Fox. Could though, this be Big Ben's last season? Nope. Nope. You know, the, the question is, is he quite athletic and explosive enough for an NBA which rewards primary ball handlers who can get to the paint consistently? And can he get his shot off given his release, um, which is, you know, awkward. Not only will he, can he hit it consistently, because maybe he's proven he can so far in college, but can he get it off in the NBA, something Stephen A., you brought up when we started originally talking about Lonzo Ball. So I, so I, I, I love the confidence. I probably would use the first overall pick on him. The only misstep here, in my opinion, is when he says I can lead a team better than he can because the way it comes off and he quickly said to take nothing away from etc but you don't want to go at someone else you just want to talk about yourself and it, the way it came I know off he says that. he's saying he's not a leader or the same kind of leader Lonzo is and maybe that's because when he makes his, the media tour right now People, including Stephen A., you have said, hey, you know, what I, the things that you hear about Lonzo is the kind of leader he is. And clearly he does that. He affects the game whether or not he's scoring. He has such a, a great uh, overall impact on the offense, on his team's offense, rebounding the ball, obviously passing the ball, which is contagious, by the way. You could see the Bruins love to pass the ball. And, and I think that starts with Lonzo. It's infectious. Um, so, so. Absolutely tremendous. Love the confidence. Maybe not the kind of sideways shot at Fultz about his leadership. Even if he didn't intend it that way, I thought it came off that way a little bit. Yeah, I didn't know he said that about Marco Fultz. So Max was basically saying he would use the number one pick on Lonzo. If you do a redraft, you would probably not use a top five pick on Lonzo. Um, and I'm sure if you, I don't know if I ever made a 2017 mock draft, but I probably had Lonzo in the top three anyway, but, um, I, I thought he was pretty solid. I, but I liked, I think I liked Fox over him. I liked Fultz over him, but I also liked that. Like I was, um, right about Fox, Fultz, whatever. Um, but I think I said I wanted, I liked Dennis Smith Jr. over him, which was clearly a wrong take. Um, uh, but if you look back, you'd probably have obviously Tatum. You'd probably take uh, De'Aaron Fox. You definitely would take De'Aaron Fox. John Collins over Lonzo. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell. How could I forget about him? And then you probably get into the debate of Jonathan Isaac, Lowry Markinen, and I'm sure there's another player that I'm missing. Oh, Bam Adebayo uh, you would have over Lonzo Ball. So let's see what Max has to say after the draft. Or after... So it's after the draft? Points, rebounds, oh, after, okay, he's played. Assist blocks and all those crude kind of measures. When you dig deeper, what's his effect on the Lakers? Well... His effect is they're more efficient. They get better shots. All this is a marginal effect right now. I'm not going to say it's an line. enormous effect. An but line. the time of possession is lower. The number of points they get possess per possession is higher. Their defense on the pick and roll is better. The, the quality of shots they get is better. The percentage of time they make those qu higher quality shots is a little better. Again, all these numbers are marginal, but it's a positive effect. And here's the kicker, Stephen A., He's 20 years old and was a one-and-done player. So if a 20-year-old one-and-done point guard has a net positive effect on every aspect, basically, of your offense and also in key aspects of your defense, how do you think he's going to be at 25? So, okay, Max is high on him a little bit. And I think, obviously, Lonzo had the name, the hype coming out of... Um, 
UCLA is that obviously that was a whole thing he goes two to the Lakers the biggest market in the NBA or one of the biggest markets and he had so many eyes on him and he obviously wasn't that good right away but like he said he was a one and done guy he was 20 years old and people are criticizing him so much because his efficiency uh shooting wasn't the greatest his form was also not the prettiest but he you have to let these guys develop that's why um you can't label somebody as the b word right after they have a bad rookie year it's completely normal to have a um especially for a point guard a ball handler to not have a very good rookie year it's normal so like you got to give these guys time because now Lonzo's was a fantastic passer fantastic ball handler fantastic defender and he's improving his shot he shot really well um at the end of the season last year i'm now a little scared if his shot attempts are going to go down and how much he's going to get the ball with bledsoe ingram uh zion all there but yeah, you really can't label somebody as the B-word right away. And Max was pretty good on his takes. I don't think it was anything wrong. There you go again. Let's Let see me what he's got to say. Here's the deal. I'm taking Lonzo Ball number one overall if I'm the Lakers or the Knicks. Two teams who desperately need point guards. But in the case of the Lakers, he would be box office because of Cali, because of his Cali roots and, of course, UCLA starring there. Outside of that... That was probably so dope for Lonzo, like, because he's from Cali, went to UCLA to go to the Lakers. I'm not so sure. Fultz is a guy that can go get it. Josh Jackson is something special. These are guys I'm going to consider <laughs> ahead of Al Alonzo Ball if I'm any other team. Josh Jackson. Why? Because Lonzo Ball needs help. Those other two, can, those other two dudes can go get it themselves. Now he is right though, and this is what I agree with his statement about. He is known as a leader and a floor general. Fultz is known as a scoring machine. He goes and gets it. Now his unfortunately he played for a team that was nine and twenty-two. Okay, now he had five thirty-point plus games. And he had 12, 25 point plus point games overall. So this dude is a scoring machine. He can go get it and can, we can respect that. But at the same time, if Lonzo wasn't specific with what he had said, I would have a problem with it. The fact that he specifically acknowledged that these dudes are prolific scorers, but where he comes in is his leadership. I didn't Wait, take prolific I wanted to see, scorers, uh, but where he as if he was talking about, oh, I, I'm a leader and I guide guys on and off the court and all this stuff. No, Lonzo Ball is considered to be a floor general. He's considered to be yep. somebody you can give the ball to and say, run my offense for me and be an orchestrator while Fultz is looking for his shot. Not a bad, not a bad take. Not a bad take. This shot, Justin ja or Josh Jackson take was bad, but not a bad analyst. Um, or analysis, excuse me, over our on Lonzo Ball. Because my issue with Lonzo... Oh boy, we're on the radio show. It's not that he's a scrub. He's not a scrub. He can play. That's not what I'm saying about Lonzo. I got two problems with Lonzo. Number one, his lack of assertiveness. The fact that he seems perfectly content walking the ball past half court, giving it to somebody else, and going somewhere to stand or hide in the corner. That's number one. Number two is the fact that he's the number two overall pick. You can't do that when you're the number two overall pick. You can't do that when Jason Tatum got drafted after you. De'Aaron Fox got drafted after you. Laurie Markkinen got drafted after you. Dennis Smith Jr. got drafted after you. Malik Monk got drafted after you. Donovan Mitchell got drafted Malik after Monk. you. You cannot be passive and go along to get along. I, I get what he's saying, but I feel like that isn't Lonzo's specific game. And I, I get what he means that he's not being assertive with the ball in his hands when he could have been maybe more of an impact on the Lakers um, and could have asserted himself as the second best player behind LeBron and the best player when um, Brandon Ingram was there. But I, I don't know. I feel like that's not particularly Lonzo's game. And be devoid of aggression. Were you the number two overall pick? Can't do it. I find that unacceptable. 
<laughs> okay, so that, that yeah, that is the video. That is going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. So that was pretty much on Max Kellerman and Stephen A. Smith. But yeah, that is going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know if you want me to do this on the reaction to, I believe, Luka Doncic he has here as well. Um, let me just see. I think he does have Luka um, before and after. Yeah, this one's got over 1.9 million views. Actually, I think I did react to this. I think I reacted to this in the summer, so never mind there. But uh, we could do Trey Young. That could be interesting as well. Uh, but yeah, that is giving for me. Thank you all for watching. Drop a like if you guys do enjoy these style of videos. And I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace. Also, some of you guys are asking if I'm going to react to the ESPN Top 100 list. They only did the Top 50. I'll be reacting to it when all 100 are out.